Whoa, you here. Come on. I see you. <laughs> you just joined a praise party and it's about to go all the way down. That's right. Come on in here and let's worship. We come in here to do it. Listen, remember we told you, we said, listen, we thermostats, not thermometers. You ain't waiting for the sermon. Let's set the atmosphere. Come on, you the temperature setter. Set that thing. Open up your mouth and praise him right now. Come on and give him glory and honor him. Do me a favor. I want you to point in the comments right now. One word that will describe your week. One word. Doesn't matter. Ups, downs. I want to see one word. Put it in the comments. One word that will describe your week. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. 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 I believe you. Yep. <laughs> Come on. One cup. Yeah, that, that, that one word. Now, now, whatever word you put in there right now, what I want you to do is I want you to put a praise in there. I want you to put a praise in there. Now, 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 now tell me what you feel about Jesus. <laughs> Come on. Old folks would have said he's all right. That's what they would have said after that. Tell me what you tell. Tell me what you think about Jesus. He's all right. Come on, put it in the comments. What you think about him? I know you told me about your week. What you think about your Lord and Savior? Come on, we welcoming you. Where are you from? Tell us where you're from. Put it in the comments. Come on, as you're praising. Who are you? Where are you from? Did you bring a visitor? Uh, did you share, right? Come on. Yeah, share right now. I want to see sharer over your name. Share this thing right now. Somebody needs to hear this word today. Come on, come on in. Come on in, y'all. Come on in. Welcome. We're so glad to have you. Welcome to Grace Community and Temple of Praise. Listen, we're here together to do this, this virtual thing, lifting up the name of Jesus, and we're glad that you join us today. God bless you as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Let's get ready to praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. I come on and give them praise. Come on. Yes. Glory to your name, oh God. The name of God, every name, Lord. We give you all the glory, Lord. Yeah. Come on, give them praise. Come on.
Your name, school like the fun. I will bless your name. No matter what I'm going through, I will bless your name. No matter what it looks like, I will bless your name. I will continue to bless your name, oh Lord. I will continue to bless your name, oh Lord. Forever I will bless your name, oh Lord. Forever, ever, and ever, and ever. Forever, and ever, and ever, and ever. Forever, and ever, and ever, and ever. And ever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever. Forever is a long time. And that's how long I'm blessed, your name. Forever is a long time. I'll bless your name forever. Forever, never, none. I will bless your name. I will bless your name. I will bless.
forward. I made up my mind that I'm gonna follow you, follow you forward. And I'm following you, following you forward. And I'm following you, following you forward. All right, y'all, it's giving time. I'm ready. I'm ready to give. Listen, the Lord had already told us, listen, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, listen, all y'all pandemic folk out there, tell the truth. This thing could have been much worse. Some of y'all should be out there with stranded, nothing. Uh, come on, the Lord protected you, blessed you. Some of y'all got a little stimulus money. I don't know. Some of y'all ain't lost jobs. You've been, listen, you've been eating, clearly. Come on, say amen. Amen, pandemic pounds. Come on, say amen. Amen. Come on, lift those hands and receive it right now. I'm, I'm with you. I went on over to the military. Come on, lost all this weight. Came home. Bless the Lord. And the pandemic, come on, gave me strength. <laughs> amen. In my body. Amen. Listen, but the Lord says, get to that gym. Listen, you've been blessed. <laughs> you know you've been blessed. Tell the truth and shame the devil. You've been blessed. And so because we're blessed, we got to be a blessing. Listen, our church is on the verge of do something amazing. We're getting to go into our new building in the summer by the grace of God of 2021. Listen, they're already doing stuff at the building. I go over there every Saturday, y'all, and I look at the work that's happening. It's, listen, there's work going on on the inside. Y'all better get ready. We need you to give. 
to help us to be able to build a place for grace. Temple of Praise needs your help to give to continue their ministry right there in Cleveland, in Cleveland Heights, in the Cleveland area as we continue to minister. Listen, y'all, we need your help. And so there's a line item that we want you to give to, whether you give in the various areas. We're going to put it right on the screen for you right there. Boom. See that right there on the screen? That's right there for you to see. That's where we want you to give. Cash App, all those options, our website. The reason why we want you to give to the digital church experience because it helps us to be able to take these messages and this experience to the entire world. With just a click of a button, y'all, we literally can share this with the entire world. Help us now by giving generously to the cause of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, bless not only the givers, but uh, bless those who don't have to give, but all of us can give something. And so, Lord, right now, we give you our hearts, our minds, our praise, our souls, and even our money. Blessing in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And amen. 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 Oh, man. I hope that you guys are enjoying the service thus far, um, that the music has been great, that you were able to just literally actually zone in to worship um, this afternoon. And I'm super excited about um, the word that God has given us for today. As you know, or you may not know, we have been going through Corinthians. Uh, so we spent some time in 1 Corinthians, and now we are in 2 Corinthians, and Paul is doing a great job. Somebody say great job. He's doing a great job of telling us all off. Like, <laughs> that's what I feel like this book has been doing. He has been coming for our lives, and he is literally speaking to us in 2020. Um, it's just such relevant information. Um, and so Pastor Emmons um, spoke last week. Um, he took us from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and went into um, chapter 6 a little bit. And we're going to be looking at chapter 6, the end of chapter 6, which is actually a very, very popular text. It's a popular text. I don't know how I keep getting scheduled for these popular texts and these popular topics. I feel like I'm being targeted, but we're not going to talk about that. But anyway, so today we're going to talk about a popular text. We're going to dive into it and see what it really has to say and see what God is really trying to teach us um, from this scripture. Um, I want to go ahead and start off uh, just by telling you that um, being hitched to a donkey will only make a donkey out of you. I'm going to say it again. Being hitched to a donkey uh -huh, will only make a donkey out of you. Father God, I just want to say thank you so much for um, just allowing us to be here right now. God, thank you so much for your word. Lord, I'm asking right now that you would allow your word to be relevant, God, that you would take it from the screen into our hearts, take it from the screen into our ears. God, that we might uh, remove distractions, that we might be able just to lean in to what it is that you are trying to say to us today. In your precious name, we do pray. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. As I said, I am super excited about um, this scripture. You've heard it before. We are looking at 2 Corinthians um, chapter 6, uh, verses 14 to 18. So I'm just going to read the, read the scripture. I know I said it's popular, but I didn't tell you what it is. Uh, so it says, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light uh, live with darkness? Uh, what harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer partner with an unbeliever? And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? Uh, for we are the temple of the living God, as God said. I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among us unbelievers. Uh, that was the New Living Translation of the Bible. Uh, give me a second because I want to read another version for you. I want to read another version. I'm going to read it from the King James Version as well. Um, just want to read another piece that's going to be very familiar to you and very popular to you. Um, verse 14 specifically says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness and unrighteousness, and what communion hath light and darkness? Uh, we hear that all the time, the unequally yoked, right? And there's been this debate, like, what, what are we talking about? Like, I, I don't know what you heard growing up. Um, or what you have interpreted the scripture to mean. Um, but I know for me, I hear that and automatically, 
I think about the fact that I am not supposed to marry <laughs> an unbeliever. That is what I that is what I think of. More so, even more specifically, um, I think about not marrying somebody outside of my denomination because that is something that has been shared. Um, that is something that um, has been taught. Is that something that y'all have heard? Other people in the room? Is that what y'all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I was making sure I'm 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 on the right track. So the other people in the room say, yeah, yeah, they heard that too. That is kind of like what 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 we're getting at, right? Um, I want to read the scripture one more time, and then we're going to dive into it. But this time I want to read it from the message version of the Bible. It just makes it very clear. Um, it says in verse. Um, in verse uh, uh, 14, but actually before I do that, before I read it, um, let's let's look at the, the context again. Remember, Paul is coming, and Pastor Edmonds kind of already talked to us last week. Paul is coming, and Paul is coming back to the Corinthians, and he's trying to check them. He's like, look, y'all are doing all sorts of, of craziness. Y'all are doing all sorts of things that you are, are doing that are not of God, and he's trying to give them a reality check, right? And we talked about the fact that he comes, and he's like, I don't need a resume, and he's reminding them of all that he has poured into them, all that he has taught them. And he's kind of just giving them a reminder of holiness, a reminder of godliness, a reminder of who God is, right? And then it says, it says, don't become partners with those who reject God. Um, how can you make a partnership out of right and wrong? That's not partnership, that is a war. Um, is light best friends with darkness? Yo, I love the way uh, the message version breaks this thing down. It's like, yo, there's no way for light and, and darkness to be best friends. Like, there's no way for us to co coexist and both still, you know, be in the same space. That's not going to work, right? Um, then it goes on to say, does Christ go strolling with the devil? Like, unbeliever, believer, like, are we strolling together? Is, is the Christ and the devil just like skipping down the lane, holding hands? Are they just like rocking it out together? Uh, do you um, do trust and mistrust hold hands? I don't know. I mean, in my opinion, I'm going to go with no. Um, who would think of setting up pagan idols in God's holy temple that's mixing uh, God's holiness uh, with, with the unholiness? He's saying, like, listen, these two are not supposed to be together, right? I um, mean, then he says, but that is exactly what we are, each of us a temple in whom God lives. God himself put it this way. I'll live in them, move into them. I'll be their God and they'll be my people. He's talking about you guys. Like, listen, I'm going to live in you. Um, you're going to be my people. I'm going to be your God. So leave the corruption and compromise. Leave it for good, says God. Don't link up with those who will pollute you. <laughs> listen, God is trying to keep you uh, fresh, okay? You're trying to pollute yourself. And God's like, listen, I, don't pollute yourself. I want to keep you fresh. I want to keep you clean. I want to make sure you you're good. And he's like, don't pollute yourself. He said, I want you all for myself. Ooh, that's good. Anybody? That's that's good, right? God wants you all to himself. Uh, can we can just praise God on that point right there. He said, I'll be a father to you. You'll be sons and daughters to me. The word of the master God. OK, so we're talking about being unequally yoked. And like we said, I've already kind of threw it out there, what we've always heard. And I just want to I'm going to say this clear. OK, so that there is no misunderstandings. OK, because I keep getting behind this camera with this controversial stuff. The text is not saying anything about marriage. Like, that's not what he's talking about. Paul, if you look at the scripture, y'all know, because we've been going through this. We've been going through this week by week, chapter by chapter. And how did he hop from talking about just overall in your life and, and, and how you are moving and what you are doing? He didn't mention marriage. Like, how did he hop to marriage? It just doesn't really even make sense for him to, <laughs> to, to go there. And it doesn't mention that. That's not really what he's talking about. Am I saying that you should go and marry an unbeliever? No, that's not what I'm telling you to do. But am I saying this is what Paul's talking about? No, he's not. It's not what he's talking about. Now, I do think that there is wisdom in making sure that you um, – are careful who you marry and that you are careful who you attach yourself to, which is still kind of the premise of, of, of what we're talking about when we talked about being unequally yoked, right? Uh, I have one thing I want to read to you from, from one of the commentaries I was reading. It said, since many new converts came from a background of idol worship, they may not have readily understood or accepted the need for strict boundaries regarding other gods, okay? Um, in their religious backgrounds, no deity demanded exclusive worship from his or her uh, devotees. What does that mean? That means, like, they were used to, like, doing whatever they want. They were used to having, like, 
a whole bunch of gods, right? And so they're making all these idols. And so like, this is really what the text is kind of talking about because Paul has to come back and like remind them, listen, listen, that's not how our God operates. We heard that just a second ago when we read the scripture that our God is like, listen, I want you to myself. Like, I'm not trying to be out here sharing. Like, I'm not trying to share with all the other gods, okay? We serve a selfish God. He's like, I'm not sharing you with everybody else. And so Paul's coming back to tell them this. Um, he's saying syncretism, syncretism was habitual. That just means like having a bunch of all, all the gods and mixing them together. It was habitual. Individuals could choose from a cafeteria line of deities to worship, and they usually chose those gods whom they hoped would offer the greatest assistance. Listen, they was playing games with the gods. Listen, they like, all right, listen, I got 10 of y'all. This is my problem today. Who's going like, like, to be my genie in a bottle today? Like That's the type of stuff they was operating in, and that's not how our God rose. And so Paul is coming back he's like this mindset of the more gods the merrier um, you've got to let that thing go you've got to um, let that thing move on and so that is really what Paul is addressing when he comes back to say listen don't be unequally yoked these people over here are doing this thing when they're having these multiple 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 gods but that is not what you are on anymore you're on a new thing and so he's saying don't be unequally yoked because when you get unequally yoked you will find yourself in a power struggle if you're still with me, go ahead and put in the comments a power struggle. You find yourself in a power struggle. What am I talking about? I mean, unequally yoked. Who knows what a yoke is? Like, I don't know if y'all, I mean, we be saying these stuff. Do y'all know what a yoke is? I don't know if y'all like ever studied, um, is that agriculture? Is that agriculture? Whatever it is with the farming and stuff, I think it's agriculture. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go agriculture. Anyways, so when, when farmers, when they would, um, try to, 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 to do their land, oh, merciful father, I'm messing this up. I don't know what the right words are, to farm their land, to till their land, whatever it is, to make the land grow, okay? They would need animals, they would need animals to help them so that they didn't have to move all the stuff. And so what they would do is that they would yoke them up together, right? And so they would yoke them up together and they would have two animals that they would put into this yoke. And um, it's actually kind of cool, I did, I did a little research, even though I know I don't sound like it because I'm, I'm forgetting the words, but they had it and they have like the two little things I'm show you they have the two little um, I'm over here here go the picture okay look at the picture okay so it got the it got the little um the little wooden thing <laughs> that's the yoke right and so it has the two little rings and so what happens is they put the animals next inside and that will yoke them up together so that they can work together to get to the accomplished goal and to pull the two of them together and so now what would happen is now what, what, what they're saying when they're saying don't be unequally yoked right it's like listen if you got the ox this one, this one, this one, that's the ox. We're gonna call we're gonna call her Oxy. Okay? We're gonna call her Oxy. So Oxy is built for this. Oxy is ready. Oxy is strong. Oxy's like, yo, I'm here. Like honestly, like she has trained for this. They train these animals to do this. They kind of teach them and they they learn their master and they learn the calls. They have like, it's like, um, like, whoa, whoa, that means back, that means slow down. That means slow down. And it's like back. That means back up. Okay, all right. I think it's like ye, that means go left. And then I can't remember what go right was. But anyways, they have all these calls, right, that they train them up for. And so, like, they're ready to do their job. They're like, yo, I'm about to pull this stuff. That's my, that's my job. I'm cool. I'm here. I'm ready. And Oxy's ready to show up. And then Oxy looks over, and Oxy's like, who's my partner? Like, who you, who you partner we with? And then you, you got my man right here. Uh, he's um, Don. You got my man um, Don. Yeah, yeah, Don is like, yo, I'm here. But Don is like, I ain't really even trying to be here, though. I'm a donkey, and uh, everybody know I'm stubborn. Uh, I'm stubborn, and I'm trying to do my own thing. I'm trying to go my own way. I'm trying to live my own life, okay? I'm not trying to be out here tilling no farm. I'm not trying to pull this thing. Y'all got this thing on my neck, and now I'm here. And so now you have Oxy and you have Don, but they have two separate agendas. And, like, the master's like, oh, I need you to go ahead and, and go straight and, and, and till this land. And, and, and that's what they're supposed to be doing, and that's why they're in this yoke, but they are having a power struggle uh, because Oxy is trying to go the right way. She's trying to go in the way that she's supposed to go. And then you got Don who's like, no, I'm going to go left field. And now you've got a problem. Unequally yoked. They're, they're, they're unequally yoked. And so when you, when you have this unequally yoked scenario, um, 
<laughs> it's kind of just like there's a power struggle because it's like one's going one way, one's going the other way. So what happens? So I came up with five different scenarios, five different scenarios. There may be some other ones, but we're going to look at five different scenarios of what happens when you choose to operate this way. OK, now, remember, like I said, we're not talking about man and wife. We're not talking about husband and wife. We talk about person and person. OK, we're talking about situations. We're talking about life. We're talking about life in general. When you um, are yoked up with somebody that you're not supposed to be yoked up with, when you're when you're unequally yoked, when you're yoked up with somebody uh, that is not uh, equal to carrying the weight, that's not on the same page, that's not trying to go in the same direction, that wasn't created for the same thing, that's not on the same mission, that doesn't have the same goal, that doesn't have the same vision. Are you with me? If you're with me, say, yeah, I'm with you in the comments. All right, so the five different scenarios, y'all didn't put it in the comments, I'm still waiting for you to say yeah, because, yeah, okay. So, yeah, so are you, okay, yeah, so they're not, they're trying to go the same way. So five different scenarios of the way that, of how this can go, right? So scenario number one, like, they could be led astray, okay? What, what can happen is Oxy, who is trying to do her job, um, you know what? Pause, okay? Not, not, not really pause, but pause on what I'm saying because I see how this is coming out, and I don't want this to come out this way because y'all not, not going to come from my life. Um, I would like Oxy and Don. I'm changing my stories. Okay, they're both about to be guys, okay? Oxy is a, a, a male, <laughs> and so is Don is a male, okay? Because I'm not even trying to uh, get at nothing right now. So Oxy and Don, two males, okay? They're both, you know, we are same situation. They're just both males. Okay, moving. Play. Okay, good. Okay. So led astray, right? So Oxy is like, Dude, I'm trying to do my job. I'm here. I'm showing up. I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And um, honestly, like, Don is like, no, I'm going this way. I'm stubborn. I'm not trying to feel this. I'm trying to go this way. And what could happen is, like, Don, I mean, Oxy, the oxen that's really built for that, that's ready, could be led astray generally because, like, it's like I have no fight in me. <laughs> like, I don't want to fight you. Like, I'm not about it. And so what am I, let's make it clear because I don't want y'all to miss it in me and my animal illustration. Um, like, you might have the believer that's, like, that's going and doing what God asked him to do, that, that's just trying to serve God, not trying to serve multiple gods, that's, that's on, on, on mission, that's trying to go into the world, teach whatever that God has called them to do. And then you have somebody else that, that, that's an unbeliever that's attached to them, somebody that, that's not really on that same mission, somebody that's trying to live their own life, a separate from God or in a different way. Um, and what will happen is um, the one that is, that is ready, that is, that is on, on, on board, Oxy will be trying to go. And what will happen is, is like, look, I'm not trying to fight. I'm not trying to fight you, but I'm attached to you. I'm yoked up to you. And so because I'm yoked up to you and you going this way, you know what? Let's go. <laughs> like, like, just forget it. Like, just forget it. Like, let's go. Like, I have no fight in me to try to do this. Like, I just, I love the Lord and I want to do right, but you're attached to me and you're pulling me this way and I don't have the fight to try and fight you, so I'm out. And I don't know if anybody wants to be real in the comments. I don't know if y'all going to be fake in the comments or real in the comments today. I'm not sure, but maybe that might have been a situation where you have experienced before where you have been yoked up with somebody and they have tried to lead you astray and you did not have the fight, the energy, the tenacity, nothing inside of you in that moment and you were led astray. And there you go and you have it and, you, and you're gone. That's scenario one. We don't want that to happen, right? Two, uh, another one is exhaustion. Yeah, we see that. We see exhaustion, right? Uh, um, that's like your fight, your fight couldn't save you. Like that's somebody who, who is just exhausted. Many of you right now might be in a situation where you are exhausted. Like you have been trying to do what's right. You have been trying to follow the Lord, but you are yoked up with some wrong people and you're still fighting. You're still in it. You're still moving the right way, but you're exhausted because <laughs> like it's a, it's, a, it's a full on battle and it's just like you're pulling, but you're just exhausted. And so you're still in it currently and you're just exhausted because you just can't take much more because the person that you're yoked up to or the people that you're yoked up to, they're not going in the same direction and you're trying to pull in your direction and it's struggling and you're exhausted. Somebody else is getting dragged. Go ahead and put that in the comments. So you're getting dragged. You're getting dragged. <laughs> you're getting dragged getting dragged and it hurts. What does that mean? What am I talking about? Yo, you're yoked up and the person that you're yoked up with 
is stronger than you. The person that you yoked up with got more energy than you. The person that you yoked up with got the devil in them, to be honest. The person that you worked up in, they got some, some demonic power. They got some stuff inside of them, and they are dragging you because you're still yoked up, and you can't really get out of that yoke, but you're allowing them to drag you. You don't have any more fight left in you. There's not really much for you to do, uh, and you're just still stuck because you've yet to walk away. Um, you've yet to decide, I'm going to I'm going distance myself from this or I'm going to get unyoked. I'm going to go back to the master and say, hey, I'm out. Take me out. Take me out of this situation. And you're still in it and you're being dragged. And I don't know if anybody ever been dragged before, but that hurt. Um, you just imagine just literally being dragged. That hurts. <laughs> um, some of y'all may have been dragged on social media. That hurts. You may have been dragged in life. That hurts. And being dragged hurts. And so you want to get to the point where you don't got to, you don't got to go through all that drag until you decide, okay, let me tap myself out of here, right? Um, another scenario is that you're winning, right? And then a lot of us, ooh, we get, ooh, like, it's just like, nah, I know y'all said don't be unequally yoked. But listen, I'm out here winning. I'm winning. I got, I'm, I'm surrounded by all of these people that's trying to do their own thing. They're not believers. They're not, they're, not, they're not doing nothing that God is trying to do. They're on their own agenda. But I'm winning out here. I am going the right way. You're winning, but you're dragging. You're winning, but you're dragging. Girl, what you talking about? Um, you're winning, and you're going in the right direction, but your boy Don is still hooked up to you. Okay, you're still dragging that donkey, and you want to know what's happening. You're dragging dead weight. You are dragging dead weight. You're going in the right direction, but you are dragging dead weight. And God is like, listen, eventually that's going to be tiring. Eventually you're going to grow weary with that. Eventually it's going to be a power struggle that you're not going to be able to overcome because you can only pull dead weight but for so long. Like eventually it's just going to be a tad bit too heavy. It's going to be a tad bit too heavy. And then the fifth scenario uh, um, that we see is that it works, right? You, you, you're working, you're yoked together, and, and, and it's Don and, and it's, um, what's the name? Uh, his name? Oxy. Don and Oxy, and they're going together, and they're, they're, they're tilling the farm, and it's working, right? But at what cost? Like, what did it cost you? Like, how much energy did it cost you? Like, what, what did it cost you to get there? Was was getting there was getting there worth it? Like you've gotta stop and look at that scenario and what is it gonna take to keep it working? Um, you've gotta ask yourself um, these questions when you look at it and you say, okay, am I, am I hit to an unbeliever? And so somebody is saying, listen, uh, Regina, I, I hear you, Pastor Regina, like I get it, like, okay, I'm, I'm not supposed to be, you know, hitched to unbelievers, but then it's just like, well, how are we supposed to, uh, like, help save people? How are we supposed to spread the word? Like, how are we supposed to, like, are we only supposed to be in our own little, um, uh, uh, what's the thing? Um, like a, Help, what's the word? Um, <laughs> in our own little silo type of situation, our own little like a, a silo groupy thing. And it's like, no, that's not that's not what, what, what God is saying here because like honestly, like there's a difference between you know, like um, being in someone's in, in the surroundings with somebody and, and 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 taking somebody even to lunch or talking to somebody, being friends with somebody, encouraging somebody, then being yoked up. There's a difference between being yoked up with somebody and then being associated with somebody. And you've got to be careful who you're yoked up with. And some of us are, have a problem because we are yoked up with all the wrong people. And then a lot of us are just messed up because, see, I'm getting ahead of myself. Hold on. Let me slow it down. Roll it back. Roll it back. Okay. The next thing I want to say is you can be hitched to something or someone that looks right. Yep. They look right but they have the mindset of a donkey. All right, so here we got, uh, we got Oxy. Oxy and Doxy. <laughs> I'm such a cornball. We have Oxy and Doxy, right? They look like, it would be good. Those look like like two believers, right? They look like, you know, like they, they're two believers. Like they both got the same denomination. They're both like, you know, hey, I'm going to say, wait, it looks like it, right? Because sometimes uh, we will get hitched up to, um, another believer in a sense. And that's why I want to be careful when we go unbeliever, believer, and, and we got to look at what Paul is saying. He's like, listen, get, get with people that got the same mindset. And that's why it's real, it's real um, dangerous just to tell people, and, and I'll just, 
whatever. It's not what it's not my sermon's on, but it's real dangerous just to say, hey, okay, don't don't marry outside of the domination or don't don't like don't do this. You gotta look at wh- where's the mindset going? Because you might have two Christians and one of them, the mindset is not the same as is as yours, right? Your mindset is still not right. You look like an oxen, but you behave like a donkey, okay? And so you still you gotta make sure that you're looking at the root, okay, at the root of this thing, right? And you've gotta make sure that you decide and you figure out that the people that you're yoked up with, not only do they look right, not only do they have the right credentials, not only do they have believer by their name, but they are going in the same direction that you're going in. They have the same values that you have. They are, um, they are choosing God to be just God. Like they're not trying to serve all these other gods. I love the way, um, you know, that, 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 that put this earlier when we read that quote, when it talked about having the deity, um, a, a cafeteria line of deities and having all these other gods. And like, that's essentially what Paul is addressing. And honestly, that's the same way I would address this to us today. Like right now, when we think of having multiple gods, we're like, no, nah, I only have one God, like I serve God and we don't have statues and we're not, you know, it's not a cafeteria line for us, but uh, can I check you and ask you, <laughs> like, is God number one? Is God number one on your list? Because even though we say we have one God, we have a whole lot of other idols, things that we make idols that we do, we're doing the same thing. So you really gotta check yourself and make sure that you're attaching yourself to people that are truly serving the one God that you're truly serving, right? And I don't want us to get caught up in this scenario, because I think that this is where a lot of us really do get caught up, because a lot of us get, okay, I'm not trying to drag no donkey around, I get it, I'm not trying to, you know, hang out with no Satan worshiper, or, or, or hang out, or, you know, all of that type of stuff, because we like to, we, we function in extremes, uh, we go from one end to the other, but God is like, listen, listen, I need you to make sure that the people that you're yoking yourself up with, not only do they look like they ought to be able to carry the weight, but they should be able to actually be on the same page with you. And so the scripture said um, um, that we read, it said that, that, that the, the mistrust and trust cannot hold hands together. And so my question to you right now is who are you holding hands with? Like the text, the text was pretty plain. The text was pretty simple. Like I, I don't have too much more for you. I just need to know who are you holding hands with? Like, that's what I'm here to just, that's the question that God wants to know. He's just like, listen, uh, who, who's got your hand? Like, and you really need to evaluate. I don't think we evaluate that question enough. I don't think we stop and look at that enough to really see, man, who, who am I yoked up with, right? Um, is this person good for me? Is this person taking me somewhere? Like, yes, in a space of, of the person that's closest to you that could be your spouse, sure. Is it on your, on your job? Are you yoked up with the right people? Like, are you yoked up with the right people um, at church? Are you roped up with the right people in the world? Are, who is your inner circle? Who are the people that you are connected to? Who is holding your hand? The thing about it is, who holds your hand will determine where your hands end up. <laughs> it will determine whether your hands end up in hell or your hands end up in heaven. A lot of times we say, oh, some person, a person don't have a hell or heaven to give me. They don't. They do not, honey. They do not. But let me tell you right now, if you holding the wrong hand, that wrong hand can lead you the wrong way. Uh, so essentially, they do have a hell that they can lead you right to if they decide that's where they're going and you're yoked up with them and then they take you uh, the wrong direction, right? And so you've got to be careful careful and make sure that when you're looking at this thing that you are yoked up with uh, the right people that you are um, allowing Christ to live in you one of the things that um, the scripture the scripture said I'm pulling it back up I want to read it real fast one of the things that the scripture it talked about that Christ wants to live inside of us right and basically Christ is like yo I'm trying to be yoked up with you so essentially you you got Christ yoked up with you and Christ is trying to go on that journey with you. And it's just like, he's like, listen, let, let's take the, is that, is the other person that you're trying to bring along? Are they on board with where we're trying to go? Are they hindering the space that I'm trying to have inside of you as well? And the thing that I think about uh, uh, with this, as, as we're closing, um, you know, the, the animals that are yoked up together, they have a task before them, right? They have a task before them. They're supposed to be, they're supposed to be tilling that, that ground and they're, they're supposed to be uh, moving um, the little thing that's hitched onto them. They're supposed to be moving it, right? And they're supposed to be accomplishing something that's in, in before them, something that they've been raised up to do. And 
you too have something that you're supposed to be doing. God has put something on your life, in your life, and, and given you a specific task. And the question is, are you doing that? Are you able to do that? Or are you not fulfilling um, the task that's before you because you're too busy trying to pull away? You're too busy exhausted. You're too busy um, trying, to, trying to pull and trying to pull somebody else along and, and try and talk somebody else into something. When God is like, listen, I've, I've given you clear direction, but you're, the person that you're yoked up to is making this much harder. And somebody right now, you came just to receive this word that you will be in agony until you're in peace. Somebody right now, honestly, most of us, a lot of us are, we are in agony right now. I mean, we are agonizing. We are struggling. We are in life in general across the board. And we're not at peace because we have so much of the wrong stuff yoked up with us that we're trying to, trying to move forward. And we're just in agony because we're not in peace and we can't, we can't get it. And we're getting frustrated. We're getting tired. We're getting exhausted. And we're, we're dropping things along the way. We're not able to complete the tasks that are before us. And until we decide, listen, let me drop off this dead weight. Go ahead and put that in the comments. Drop the dead weight. And guys, like, drop the dead weight. Let me drop this dead weight so that I can move forward. Because listen, when you drop the dead weight, you're going to be able to move forward in peace. You're going to be able to move forward a lot quicker. You're going to be able to move forward a lot better. You're going to be able to move forward. Just like you're moving forward. Right now, many of us are stagnant. Right now, many of us are in the same place and we're looking around and nothing's moving. We're looking around at land that needs to be dug and we're just like, no, we're not doing our job and we're just sitting in the same place. And what what is that doing to you sitting in the same place? It's just, it's agonizing and it's killing you slowly and you're wondering why. And it's because you are yoked to the wrong people. And I just want to challenge you to, once you turn this off and once you log off, take some time, maybe even need to pull out a notebook and you might need to say, listen, who am I yoked up to? Like, it might be something. What am I yoked up to? You know what I'm saying? What other what other idols? Maybe maybe it's me. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm the one that's not right to be yoked up to somebody else. Maybe I'm pulling somebody else down. Right. Some of us need to check ourselves. Listen, that's another thing. We're real quick. We're real quick to all think that we are um, that we're um, uh -oh, look at me. I'm messing up. I'm going back. But y'all going to get this picture. <laughs> we're real quick to think right here. We are real quick. I'm about to end. I'm about to end. But this one right here, this is for you right here. You real quick to think you oxy. You real quick to think you oxy. Real quick to think you oxy. And you dawn the whole time. <laughs> you dawn the whole time because you were going the opposite way. You're the one that's not, that's, that's going another direction. You're not trying to do what God is telling you to do. You're the one being stubborn. And it's just like, yo, figure out where you are in this scenario when we think about unequally yoked and you want to make sure first of all that you got yourself together and that you're yoking yourself up with the right people don't be the one pulling somebody else down either right and so you want to make sure can we all agree can we agree on that can we have a real self-reflection can we hop off of here and and, and pull out our, our, our notebooks pull out our bible and, and spend some time in worship spend some time evaluating spend some time becoming becoming self-aware and looking at ourselves and saying all right first of all am i oxy second of all am i done third of all who is yoked up to me do they gotta go are they dead weight are they pulling me are they dragging me am i dragging them you gotta ask yourself those questions and so i want to encourage you to ask yourself those questions and to really decide um, not just to ask yourself the questions and then move on, but to make those hard decisions. I think it's, uh, it's so hard because we don't want to um, hurt people or let people down. And a lot of times we carry dead weight because we feel like it's our responsibility. And this scripture is just reminding us that it's not our responsibility. Our responsibility is to show people Jesus. And to be honest, a lot of times if you would drop that dead weight, that's going to show them Jesus. You following Jesus 100% and you being so sold out on who you are, so sold out on who Christ called you to be, is going to push them to be better. It will push them to see, man, I want what they got. Like, I want to be a part of that. But you sticking in that situation and pulling on dead weight is just killing both of y'all. And then nothing around you is getting done. Nothing's getting tilled. No um, task that you have been asked to do is being completed. And you're not fulfilling your purpose and you're not walking in your calling. And we don't want that anymore so I want to encourage you um, just to just to ask yourself that question and to make sure that you're not um, hitched to the wrong thing hitched to the wrong person um, let's pray father God I say thank you so much just for you being good God I say thank you so much for you just being who you are Lord I say thank you so much for um, 
just the scripture that we were just able to unpack, God. Um, Lord, many of us, we've heard it before and, you know, we have thought on a high level, yes, I have Christian friends or yes, I hang around the right people. But God, we want to really just take this deeper and make sure that we are really, first of all, that within ourselves, God, that we have our stuff together. God, we know we're not going to be perfect, but God, we want to be walking in the right direction. And Lord, we want to be with other people that are also yoked. We want to be yoked with people that are also trying to walk in your same direction. And God, we know that ultimately you called us here to just spread your message to the world. And we still want to do that, God. We want to do that. Um, and we want to do that in the right way. And we, God, we know that Lord, you are going to uh, empower us to do that. And Lord, we don't want to give our power away by being yoked up to the wrong things um, and focusing our attention on the wrong things. But God, we want to be able to just move forward. So God, as we leave this stream and as we hop off and we go, God, I'm asking that you would allow us to take some time to actually reflect on who's connected to us, actually reflect on what other idols are we? Are we, are we that person? Are we the donkey? Are we being stubborn? Are we the one that's out here looking at other things above you that are not making you number one, God. And if we are, God, we say sorry, God. In this moment, God, we repent. And God, we say sorry, we don't want to do that anymore, Lord. We want to make you number one. And um, Lord, we just say thank you uh, just for this reminder. We say thank you um, because we're going to leave out of here better than we came, God. We may have came cheating on you. We may have came with other gods, but God, we're leaving here just saying, God, we want you to be number one. And God, we want to be uh, yoked up with people that also want you to be number one. And that is our goal. And so I pray that prayer that uh, we will be able to see this happen within our lives. Um, Lord, we love you. God, we thank you. In your precious name we do pray. Amen and amen.